This is Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we are continuing our weight loss blog. Today, we are talking about the concept of a virus causing obesity, which has been in the news a little bit lately. And I'm going to go over with you what the real data are, and you can decide for yourself. I think this is a bit um, sensationalized by the media. Oftentimes, they take these things and run with it as though uh, this is the um, greatest and most important cause for obesity. Um, I would argue that while it's a fascinating piece of the pie, no pun intended, that um, that this is a very minuscule part of the equation. Uh, we are, again, surrounded by food triggers and advertisements and uh, crazy high calorie uh, uh, foods and beverages and keep your eyes open. Really be aware of what is being done to you through marketing strategies. Um, even this morning, you know, I wake up, I check the weather, and across the weather channel app is an advertisement for, you know, breakfast burritos at Taco Bell or something like that. And I am, like, mortified that this is, like, it's just pervasive because the food industry has us, you know, um, hook, line, and sinker. So while these things, these concepts are interesting, um, please don't fall prey to the uh, uh, idea that, oh, I got infected, so now I'm done. Um, it's, it's not that at all. Uh, you'll see um, when you look at this. So um, the problem with the concept of adenovirus 36, which is what we're talking about, because many of the viruses that we see in animals that uh, seem to cause a bit of uh, weight gain uh, are not even transmitted to humans. So A, that's one thing. And uh, B, this adenovirus is not very prevalent in humans. So we have to look at this. So far, it seems to be this is an association. Nobody's proven in humans cause and effect. Um, <clears throat> you may be able to postulate there's a little cause and effect that can be shown in things like chickens. But um, in humans, there are so many variables, it's very difficult to show cause and effect. But you can, you can show some association. Now, what does that mean? It's very important for you to understand that in medicine and in the world of health, um, people can make things sound uh, almost however they want to by how they word their statistics. So association means that, well, we see this more often in people who are obese than we see that it that there's this antibody in people who are non-obese. Okay, so if I take an example from something that makes more sense. So let's say you wanted to do a study on um, uh, whether or not uh, ice cream causes drownings and you went to collect data uh, at a beach and you found that on the days when there was more ice cream sold more people drowned well you could say that there's an association between more ice cream intake and more drownings but could you say cause and effect no because there's something called a confounder in that which is that the number of people on hot days that buy ice cream is higher and the number of people that go swimming on hot days is higher and so you can't say cause and effect if there's if there are what we call confounding variables so <clears throat> that's why in order to show true cause and effect you must get rid of all the other factors and in weight this is so difficult there are so many things that factor into your weight so let's just let me just show you this so that at least when you see these articles you can kind of make some educated understanding about it right so they did check um, in a cohort of people um, did they have antibodies or did they not have antibodies to this adenovirus 36 and in the obese patients 30 percent of them did have antibodies in the non-obese patients, only 11%. So there, maybe there's this association between in obese patients, more people have antibodies. That's not cause and effect, though. Similarly, they did twin studies, and there is some association between uh, a twin who was adenovirus 36 positive had a BMI of uh, around 26, and the twin that was negative had a BMI of around 24. This doesn't calculate up to a huge discrepancy in absolute weight. It's not uh, over the top. Uh, so, and if I figured it out in pounds, I just picked a five foot eight inch person and that would change the weight from about 160 to about 172. So 
Is there a little difference? Yes. And the other thing is it's not in all people. So not all people who were positive for adenovirus 36, meaning show that they have antibodies, were overweight. So how do you explain that? Uh, it, it really uh, makes you understand that you have to delve deeper. You have to understand these are cause and these are association, not cause and effect. So when you see these news studies, don't get um, don't get uh, uh, too don't join don't don't um, uh, go along with that bandwagon. Uh, there you have so much control over your weight and your food choices. Okay, so this has been my little. Um, little lesson on statistics and uh, the whole adenovirus question and I figured I would address it in case anybody had any um, uh, concerns about it. So you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work. Keep your portion sizes small. Keep counting your calories. Remember um, my fitness pal app works great. Weight Watchers works great. Pick the one that works for you and you have control over your um, your fitness, your health. Um, keep trying to exercise, like even if you can do 15 minutes a day, a small amount. Small amounts in um, regularity is so important that you, you have those good habits. Try to shoot for at least three times a week, four times if you are, if you have that much um, ability, and just keep plugging away. Uh, remember that you can't, you're not going to uh, be able to really exercise the weight off. You've got to limit your calorie intake. The exercise helps with maintaining the loss. Okay. Keep these ideas firmly entrenched uh, and you guys are doing great. Okay. Thanks.